I'm okay. <laughs> it doesn't hurt as much as it did at first. The tinfoil tends to help. But what I have learned is that everything is connected. Nothing happens by accident. Nothing happens without the train master's permission. Yes. And this tinfoil hat, it gives me protection, uh, reception, projection. I'm hoping contraception is in there somewhere. <laughs> I really am. Because, you know, the only thing our offspring do is become better at making weapons of war. So I worry. I worry about odd facts, people. I worry because industry giants own our media. Yes. Our common information. Now, information is everything, right? Information is power. Like, take a little company like General Electric. Hey, health concerns, financial interests, military industrial contracts, and all the stuff they control, like uh, NBC Universal. Oh, GE. Not only making your weapons of mass destruction, but also making your news. <laughs> I think that's a little weird, hey? Well, anyways, <laughs> when it all gets me down, I always sing a little song to help chase my paranoid blues away. And it goes like this, and you can join in because here's the words. <laughs> and here's your note. La, okay, la. I've got my tinfoil hat on. Hip, 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 hooray. My tinfoil hat shield me from the mind-controlling ray. Good! I've got my tinfoil hat on to insulate my brain. As long as I have got my tinfoil hat on, I'll be sane. I've got my tinfoil hat on. My mind cannot be soiled. I've got my tinfoil hat on and their evil plans are spoiled. <laughs> Listen up, people of Earth. <laughs> we all know things are not as they seem. I mean, you know, you think your taxes go to pay for roads, but in reality, they go to pay interest to private banks. Private banks who've owned all the countries that went bankrupt after World War I, let alone World War II. Oh, but hey. Thanks, Canadian Finance Act of 1914, because we could never be this in debt without you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, international banker butts keep the better part of the world beholden to them in overbearing interest debt. <laughs> banks control the government, so say it with me, banks control the world. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know what I found out? The best evil part for these guys is that constant war equals profit. So people sell weapons to both sides, and then <coughs> afterwards, guess who gets the reconstruction contracts, eh? Not the girl guides, my friends. <laughs> Not by a long shot. Oh. Hey, you recognize this? Does this mean anything to you, eh? This is the banker butt backside of the U.S. $1 bill. And this great seal was put there in celebration by the Federal Reserve in 1935. <laughs> yes, my darlings, you and I are on the bottom of a huge pyramid of military, industrial, religious, corporate, and financial barbarian crazy train mind control. <laughs> oh, that's a mouthful, eh? I should say that again. I tell you what, I'll say that again, but more slowly, and with hand gestures. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be good, wait for it. Here we go. You and I are on the bottom of a huge pyramid of military, industrial, religious, corporate, financial, barbarian, crazy train, my control, and sex! <laughs> I didn't have to say that slowly now, did I? <laughs> it's not a new thing, it's just becoming more painfully obvious, eh? But it ain't all tears, and that's why I'm here, eh? Because ultimately, 
we're the deciders. Oh, yes. Let alone us. Hear that, George W., we're the deciders. In this great big pyramid, we are the foundation, so we decide if it all falls down. <laughs> Hear that? There's way more of us than there are of you, so na 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 too <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I cracked myself up. <laughs> okay. Look, put it this way. We could be the deciders if we put our minds to it. Because, you know, contrary to popular belief, <laughs> resistance is not futile. I am a proud idealist. And I know that all people really want is a bed to sleep in, there's some sex, uh, some good sex, <laughs> a little food, don't we, don't ya? Had any of that today? <laughs> All right, but <laughs> if the guys in charge want to do something innocent like, oh, I don't know, microchip us all and create a global fascist state, for instance, well, they're smart enough to know that you would say, what? Wow, talk to the glove, get lost, freaks. So you know what they do? They do. The totalitarian tiptoe. <laughs> yes, they create problems. Project Northwood, Google it. That's do it all for you. So then you and I, oh no, remember what dear old Uncle Joe said? The easiest way to gain control of a population is just to carry out your acts of terror, eh? And then the public will clamor for the Patriot Act when they're scared shitless. <laughs> yeah, so you and I end up demanding that they do something about it. And they go, oh, yes, the problems. Yes, well, we'll get right on that. <laughs> and they just scuttle off and do exactly what they intended to do all along. <sighs> Moving on. You know, I wonder if anybody knows who said that quote. <coughs> well, you know now. <laughs> no, I don't even have my quote. We're going to try this again. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's after this slide. But next slide, I want you to guess who said it, because, you know, when I first read it, I totally thought it sounded familiar, okay? Naturally, the common people don't want war. But after all, it is the leaders of a country that determine the policy. And it is always a simple matter to drag the people along, whether it is a democracy or a parliament or a communist dictatorship. Voice or no voice, the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. This is easy. <laughs> all you have to do is tell them that they're being attacked and then denounce pacifists for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger, and it works the same in every country. Now, who said this? You already know. <laughs> Does anybody remember who it was? <laughs> Don't tell me, let me just have an illusion. I will tell you. Where are going? Old Nazi pants himself. <laughs> in happier times. Do you still think I'm crazy? Well, let's take a little look at our own little Reichstag fire, eh? Our own little 9-11. 9-11! 9-1-1! Terror! War on terror! 9-11! Terrorism! Terror storm! Terror! Believed to be linked to Al-Qaeda. <laughs> the 11th day of the ninth month of 2001. Those towers came crashing down, bless their souls. But I guess I'm still in shock and awe because no other steel frame building in history has fallen from fire. Ever. You know, once in Spain, one burned for days with red hot flames and it didn't collapse. You know, when I watched these buildings fall on TV, I didn't see the buildings pancaked down into a pile of office stuff and bodies trapped between.
tweeting, no. There was nothing left. Everything was gone, fused into a mess. mess. Now experts say, <clears throat> if the buildings had pancaked, the collapses would have taken 40 seconds with the resistance. Well, that's four times longer than I watched them fall in. <laughs> so all kind of weirds me out. And, and I have to keep reminding myself that these collapses were totally. I mean, none of the massive core columns were left sticking up in the air like an upside down spider or something, no. Everything just went at once. The towers fell in 10 seconds. Now I know that it is physically and scientifically impossible for the buildings to fall as they did, yet they did fall 10 floors per second. Is that evidence of something fishy going on, eh? Well, I don't know, but these white elephants were pulverized. Now look at this picture. This is a picture of one of the towers when it was being built. Check out the core. I don't know. Can jet fuel kerosene, burn, melt, destroy, pulverize to dust these massive concrete and steel columns? I don't know, but wait and see. Because in the molten steel from the bottom of ground zero, Dr. Stephen Jones of Brigham Young University found the telltale signs of thermite. That's a substance used for cutting steel in demolitions. No. I don't know, I, I don't know if planes and fire could bring these buildings down. I think, I think, Baloney has that first name. It's D E M O N I T I O N. Oh, that's a smart kid. <laughs> I just think that a controlled demolition using high-tech explosives is a little more physics and logic 101. I mean, the face of this puppy was still molten weeks later, for heaven's sakes. Now jet fuel will burn up real quick. 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit steel only begins to melt after hours at 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, not 56 minutes with a smoldering oxygen star fire. So how could it happen? I mean, I think, you know, right? <laughs> and I burned some cookies and my pan never melted and it didn't weaken and my oven is okay. <laughs> All right, hey, let's go here. This is pretty. This is a topographical map and it's made using lasers, so it's very modern. <laughs> yeah, now this is ground zero. And as you can see, everything's gone. There's nothing left. People? Desks, files, photocopiers, faxes, pulverized into pyroclastic flows of white ash. Oh, it was a beautiful day that day. Do you remember the nice blue sky? It was a perfect day for photography. And the towers fell. Free fall speed, no resistance. When I say fish are fishy, because something kind of stinks up here anyways. ships arriving. No, the Fuegans had a canoe culture. They only knew the concept of a canoe. So their eyes could literally not perceive the tall ships. They couldn't perceive them until the shaman explained the concept to them. That's information control. No concept, no precept. So look again, because sometimes no matter how big it is, you just can't see it. I think it's sometimes smell it. <laughs> Saying it's a whole other thing, though. <laughs> like, like what about Building 7, eh? Now, why did that have to come down? 47-story, super strong, wonder structure, eh? Real axis of evil, fight the special. Designed to be disaster-proof, <laughs> earthquake-proof, <laughs> fire-proof. <laughs> Ding, 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 
ding, ding, ding, ding, ding. Building 7 happened to be home to all the paper trails. Wall Street fraud investigations, Securities and Exchange Commission, CIA, Secret Service, Department of Defense, Emergency Measures Organization. And last but not least, oh, what was that thing? Oh, the Enron investigation! Burn! <laughs> You know, as it happens, only five companies in the whole world can bring down a building neatly into its own footprint. Yeah, that's a real art. Oh, it's a real art, the way those three buildings fell that day. Because an uncontrolled collapsing skyscraper will usually topple over and spread onto other buildings. Other buildings potentially not insured by Larry Pullman <laughs> Silverstein. <laughs> Oh, ouch. You see, it's really much better to use a professional. <laughs> oh, by the way, no plane hit Building 7. Oh, no, it just fell down like that, all on its own. Again, the picture. <laughs> yes, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The third office building to fall from fire in history. Amazing, unbelievable, pick your word. Ooh, if I'm suggesting that this was a controlled demolition, then who do you suppose would have set those explosives ahead of time, eh? Oh my gosh, it must have taken days. Maybe it took weeks. Do you think it took months? Don't mind me, ma'am. Just laying the cable for the new security system. <laughs> you never be too careful, eh? <laughs> and uh, we will be right out of your hair. <laughs> you know, coincidentally, one of these special demolition companies is based in New York City. It's aptly named Controlled Demolition Incorporated. And just by happenstance, it was given the task of cleaning up the crime scene. <coughs> Ah. And here's something that really, you know, niggles at me. <sighs> Guess who was a director for the security company responsible for the World Trade Center complex? Yeah, that would be Marvin Bush, little brother at George W. And his contract with this company, Securicor, was up on September 10th, 2001. Now, am I crazy? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? <laughs> Do you think something funny's going on, eh? Oh, now, come on, let's don't jump to conclusions. Now, straighten up. It's time for your briefing from the Pentagon. <laughs> Good morning. Now, boys and girls, I want you to look at this picture. This is the so-called plane that hit the Pentagon on 9-11. Now, my question is this. Sweet Anola Gay, who the H-E double hockey sticks got fired for turning off the whole anti-aircraft system at the Pentagon that day. I think they turned off a couple cameras too. This is a heavily defended location with the most concentrated anti-aircraft system in the U.S. of A, boy. Uh, sir, sir, yes, um, no, no one got fired I heard of, sir, but perhaps the system was using Microsoft, sir, and it crashed. <laughs> High technology is very finicky, sir. Uh, well, as you can see, sir, it is uh, very hard to fit a square peg into a pentagon window. <laughs> sir! <laughs> you know, sometimes I say to myself, I just say, Hillary used to think someone's trying to scare the fuck out of you. No, I don't. <laughs> No, it goes more like this. <laughs> Hillary, do you think someone's trying to scare the beep out of you? Hey? <laughs> Just so they can, I don't know, control you a bit better. Eh? Maybe get you to beg stuff, yeah. Get you to beg stuff like, uh, oh, like this one. Oh, please help us, uh, Uncle Cuddles. Please help us, Uncle Cuddles. Uh, please save us from the horrible, Awful, terrible, terrible, terrorist <coughs> bad guys. You know, I heard about them on Fox News. <laughs> and free thinkers like Rosie O'Donnell. Save us from her and tinfoil hat ladies and hippies. 
and all those who threaten our Walmart way of life because, oh my goodness, what would we do? Oh my gosh, we need your help! We need your help! What about, what about bird flu? What about the ozone? The dwindling ozone. What about suicide bombers? Oh! I love you. 